Well, today we're going to talk about parking and particularly the increased costs that are looming for businesses, employees, and even the general public a little further down the line. Um, Janati and Shauna, you reported on this topic this week. Um, Janati, I really like something that you said in your uh, cover story, which was we're looking at a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that from free to paid parking? Sure. Well, uh, that is the paradigm shift that you just mentioned. Um, it's like a, basically an overhaul of the parking system that's been in Palo Alto for decades. The familiar color zone with funky colors like what is like it? Lime, lime and coral. Coral. Well, yes, yes. Yeah. Zone. yeah so um, the, the current practice of you could park for two hours in a zone and then you have to move your car is going to be abolished sometime in the near future, most likely, and it's going to be replaced with parking meters or or pay stations. Uh, that's what it seems like, at least uh, the direction in which the council is going. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit down the line, but what we're talking about this week um, and what the focus of my story is, something's going to happen uh, just in, in a week or two, most likely, which is the huge hikes um, to the parking permits, which are also part of the same shift. Yeah, some people are going to face some sticker shock mm -hmm. pretty soon. Full disclosure, I'm one of those people. <laughs> yeah, we are in the California Avenue zone. We're talking about downtown. We're talking about California Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, these are pretty sizable hikes, um, and there's a lot of reasons behind it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can talk about that a little bit. It's not just um, it costs money to, to park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a general recognition that uh, the city's rates right now are way below market. Uh, they're below um, what other cities charge in the area, with the exception of Mountain View, where parking is free downtown there as well. Mm -hmm. Just about every other city's got meters or some kind of other permit system. Mm -hmm. And so um, the city recently commissioned a study by this group called um, Dixon Resources Unlimited, and they basically confirmed that the city could potentially charge a lot more to, to bring um, the rates up to market, and, mm -hmm. and which will not only bring in some much needed revenue for congestion-related measures, but will also potentially dent the demand for parking and uh, prompt some drivers to kind of take other modes of transportation. It's That's the idea, at least. So much. Mm -hmm. yeah, how do they home. come out? How do they come up with the amounts that they're talking about? Uh, they looked at uh, what other cities are charging, and in some cases, it's more than thousand dollars per year. Like uh, they looked at like cities like Berkeley, San Mateo. And, uh, and they basically, they didn't bring Palo Alto's rate uh, up to those levels, but they made it so it's a little more in the kind of mid-tier. And also, uh, they, they suggested during the budget discussions that there will be other increases uh, kind of in the next few years. So even the rates that are set now, I don't think are the final kind of what they set. is just kind of part of this greater paradigm shift to kind of keep on raising them until uh, people, until more people switch to other modes. Yeah, it's really surprising. I mean, Berkeley was uh, an annual employee permit was like over a thousand dollars. Yeah, um, we're currently down, our downtown's about four sixty six. Is that it? Four sixty somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah, four sixty six. And they're right. proposing to raise it to seven hundred something. Seven thirty. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. And and employees are thrilled, right, Shauna? <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> thrilled for sure. Yeah. I mean, a lot of workers uh, and employees that I spoke to. Um, they're already unable to afford parking permits as they are at the price that they are. And a lot of them are moving their cars every couple of hours or parking farther away. Um, they're really unhappy with this decision. Yeah. The, the, the hopscotchers, as they're called. The hopscotchers, <laughs> yeah. The shift from zone to zone. Yeah, right. I was really surprised by one person you um, that was in um, your portion of the stories, which was uh, someone at Subway who said she was parking on Stanford Ave. Yeah. I looked up how far she has to park in order to get out of any kind of zone <laughs> um, where they require permits and she's like way she said Stanford Avenue that's like way, way up back. up there because College Terrace has a parking permit system and Evergreen yeah. Park has a parking permit system and you say about she had to get there like 40 minutes yeah. early or that parking was already gone mm -hmm. yeah so she was saying that um, she and her employees get to work 40 minutes early because 30 minutes early and all of those spaces are gone yeah the free all day parking yeah yeah, it's pretty pretty um, dire. It sounds like they're really getting the squeeze. Now, when um, downtown's residential preferential parking program, RPP, started, I know the businesses were really pushing back mm -hmm. on that even getting started. Um, and Shauna, you talked to some business owners as well downtown um, to see what that's doing to them as business owners, because some are covering their employees' costs. Yeah, so uh, 
some of the small businesses, small business owners I spoke to said that um, they are now having to bear the, the cost of transportation for their employees because um, lower wage workers are already, they're paid a certain percentage and if a large amount of that is going to parking, they're not going to want to work there. Um, and it's just also impossible for them to afford that. Um, a hotel manager that I spoke to downtown said that um, even reduced price permits are hard to hard to get because it goes through, employees have to go through a process of online requirements, paperwork, and mm-hmm. especially for um, employees who aren't native, native English speakers, uh, they really need help with that. And that's something mm-hmm. that managers and small business owners aren't necessarily able to provide as a resource. And so um, they're going to have to pay full price now for their employees. And it probably doesn't help that the supply is so limited and you have huge wait lists. So even mm-hmm. if you can't afford it, there's no guarantee that you will get one. Yeah. Especially in the uh, RPP program that you mentioned. Uh, mm-hmm. Given that they're going to be, it's already kind of tough to get one, but then they're going to be decreasing them every year, the number of amount, the number of permits given to employees. So, which is another strategy to get people to take other modes. Yeah. I, I, I get that um, we have a transportation management association, new nonprofit, trying to get people to stop commuting by driving solo. I get that there's that. I get that, that parking garages um, are in the works, both for downtown and California Avenue. So there's Which is kind of ironic. But go on. <laughs> but yes. There so there's money that needs to be. Oh, actually, there's money that needs to be raised. But but come to speak of it, actually, the California Avenue garage isn't being funded by any of this, right? No, it's by the hotel visitors. Yeah. And the downtown garage, is that being funded? Hotel by? visitors as well. It's the hotel tax. Okay. They're both part of the infrastructure plan from okay. 2014. So I get tax. that the Transportation Management Association, that's the only thing left, um, needs to be funded and, and, and this is a way. But I was just curious, are there, okay, if you have um, the parking permit programs in the residential neighborhoods, mm-hmm. is there enough parking in the core if, if we didn't have paid parking? Is there enough parking in the core for employees and visitors? I think there's a general recognition that the that the answer is no, and no. that and that even with all the measures uh, that they plan to take with the TMA, uh, you would still need to get the garage going just to kind of take care of the huge shortage. I mean, mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, I was downtown um, for lunch a while back, and I was really surprised. This was after the residential permit went uh, program went into place. It seemed like there was a lot of parking down there. I mean, this was middle of the day. There was more parking there than there was down here on California Avenue. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, so things have definitely shifted um, as a result. I think I don't know where people have gone, but um, the two-hour, the fact that they can't park um, in the neighborhoods, I don't know, has somehow shifting. Yeah, it's places. definitely it's definitely mm-hmm. easier to find parking now, especially in the peripheral areas of downtown, mm-hmm. because you don't have employees leaving their cars there all day yeah, unless they have it. permits. And uh, so, to, to that extent, uh, it, we should point out that the city's efforts with the RPP have been hugely successful mm-hmm. in terms of uh, easing the residents' concerns about about parking. So, you know, I don't want to make it seem like you know, the city's gone completely like off the deep end with these <laughs> rates. They do they do have a strategy, and I mean, right now, um, you mentioned downtown. Here in Cal Avenue and Evergreen Park, they implemented their program in April, and if, if you just walk or, or stroll uh, through it, you could see like tons of open spaces, which yeah. w- was unheard of like a year ago. Huge so, difference. So, and they so, would say a huge difference in their quality of life. Yeah, just not having cars moving. And they would use exactly life. those words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so uh, you know the council should get some credit for kind of taking care of the residents who who've asked for this. Uh-huh. Uh, but but on the other end, um, I feel like the outreach to the employees who are going to be hit really hard on July 1st yeah. has been really kind of, um, what's the generous way of putting it? Light? Ab- abysmally underwhelming. Yeah. I mean, th- they had a sign up there on Cal Avenue that said that the rates are going to go up to $730 annually, which is the downtown rate. Which is not correct. Yeah, which here. is not correct. Yeah. So so the good news is they're only going up to like 365 so... Um, Half the pain. Yeah, and, and we haven't seen really, you know, outreach meetings with business owners to tell them about this rate or anything. We just had a couple of signs, so it's a. Um, yeah. It's, what? I, I think what yeah. Sorry. Oh, so, did, did, so did the business owners seem to know that these increases were coming? Yeah, they they knew, but I think they were really unhappy about the fact that they didn't really have a role in expressing their opinions about it beforehand. They felt that um, a lot of residents were mostly making these decisions and mm-hmm. um, that they weren't spoken to or asked for um, input before the decision was made. And I think that's something that they feel makes them uh, unwelcome in the city and makes them not necessarily want to continue working um, as a part of the community. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask, obviously they're going to be raising a lot more money, so how are they going to use that money? 
Uh, in the downtown area, uh, that means that the Palo Alto TMA is finally going to get the kind of money that it said it wanted. And the way, it, it, the way it's been using the money so far, and I imagine it will do uh, more of that same thing, plus add more programs. But it, it's been providing like um, service workers with Caltrain passes, basically. is basically giving people uh, who, who can do by Caltrain free passes, uh, either Caltrain or the Eco Pass from the VTA, so they could shift from cars and it'll be it'll be free for them. I think uh, they're shift. I think they're planning to shift it so that new people who want to enroll in this program will be able to get passes, but the ones who've been in it will get like a fifty percent subsidy instead of a hundred. But um, that's one program giving away transit passes. And another one is kind of uh, subsidies for Lyft uh, for people who want to commute. But and there's other carpool and services. Scoop. Scoop, yeah, that's Scoop. a new one. Love that that, name. that, that <laughs> yeah, that's the one that the, the um, basically allows people to for one dollar commute with someone else, or for five dollars, or we get five dollars to bring on a commuter, and that's also subsidized. And they're looking at other things, both the city and the TMA, like shuttles, greatly expanding the shuttle system. I, I, I expect you know some of that money will help fund that. But that's some of the things they're looking at. Um, so let's talk about pay stations and pay <clears throat> meters, because mm -hmm. uh, you referenced at the very beginning. Those are also looming. Um, has there been an actual decision to move forward with that kind of well, program? Or? Actually, first of all, I just want to say, uh, even on these permit prices, the mm -hmm. final decision has not been made. Uh, the point. Finance Committee approved, uh, like, actually raising the statute recommendation further, mm -hmm. but the full City Council still has to vote on this, and Tuesday, the, 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 June 27th, is when they're going to do that. So they don't want, want to suggest that it's already a done deal. It's, yeah. It looks like it's about to be a done deal, or at least some version of this. Uh, the, the, the pay station and parking meters is a little bit further from being a done deal. Um, in April, the council had a really long and detailed discussion about all these proposals from the Dixon study that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, they weren't ready to go ahead and say, yes, install pay stations or yes, install pay meters. But they all just basically supported the concept and they asked staff to come back, um, I guess the staff planning to come back in mid-August after the recess mm -hmm. with what they call a parking management plan, mm -hmm. which I expect will have paid parking as a, a major component. But it might look at kind of different rates, like mm -hmm. where the meters make sense, where the stations make sense, that kind of thing. So that has yet to be fleshed out. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit further down the line, like I said, but it seems like that's kind of the direction in which they're going. But that would apply to everyone then? This is anyone who The hopscotchers. Goes to the, downtown. The, the end, it's the yeah. end of hopscotching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so let me just ask you, on the council, is there generally sort of a unified um, agreement that people need to pay for parking, this is the next inevitable step in managing parking? Or are there some differences of opinion, you know, maybe some pushback, maybe some let's slow down um, ideas? By people, do you mean employees? Oh, I'm sorry, no, I mean, the, I mean yeah. at the council, on the council. Oh, no, no, I, I think, I just want to make a distinction. I mean, when you say people pay for parking, I think most people in the council believe employees should be the people pay for parking as opposed to residents. because. Uh, as we, we talk about the jobs housing balance, the fact that the city's population like triples during the daytime. Mm -hmm. And so employees are probably contribute about at least two thirds of the traffic, I don't know, roughly speaking. Uh, I, I, don't think, I think it's kind of unfair to say that the residents don't drive at all. But when you look at these rates, like the residential rates are probably gonna stay the same. That's what the finance can be voted, $50. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the employees are gonna you know, yeah. go up. So it's yeah. like, so yeah, they think people should be paying more for parking, but they also think particular people should be paying more for parking. And yeah. Those are the people who happen to not vote in Palo Alto and who might possibly have less of a choice because mm. they have to come here to work. Is it unusual to hike prices so so greatly? I mean, it's like 150% almost. I, I think it's very unusual. I mean, yeah. it's a... Uh, I don't know whether whether you have uh, whether you believe this is kind of a good move or a bad move. You don't see hundred percent changes in rates very yeah. often. I mean, yeah. unless it's like a new program that, with like a new rate or something. So that's why, like, I call it a paradigm shift because uh, it, it does kind of take a pretty comprehensive look at revamping the entire parking system. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just a matter of kind of you know raising the rates and we're done. I mean, they want to kind of create new wayfinding signs, kind of change the garages to to have like spots light up, make it easier for people to find parking. They, they want to do a lot of things and you know, this effort's going to kind of help pay for it. But, uh, but, but the significance of the city's ambitions kind of helps explain in part to the significance of the, of the rate hike. Yeah, Hillary Gittleman was initially suggesting a more phased approach, so slower increases. Mm -hmm. um, are there people on the council who agree with her? Like, let's take it, maybe not go up to 766 this time, let's go up a little bit, $500. Well, um, 
So far, the only council members we've heard discuss this are the members of the Finance Committee, and actually Greg Tanaka wasn't there at that meeting, so three so members of the Finance three Committee, of mm -hmm. and uh, they were they raised <laughs> the fees beyond what she recommended, <laughs> so, so, so they said raise them more, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, what the rest of the council members think, um, we have yet to find out. We know they support kind of the general switch to paid parking, mm -hmm. but we've also heard um, several council members say repeatedly uh, that uh, they're, they're concerned about the effect this will have on service workers, the re retailers, the people Shana spoke to. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they, they might explore like uh, reduced prices for people below a certain income level and things like that. So I do think some council members are cognizant of that and, uh, you know, Every time like a shop closes, like you know, you have everybody talking about how we lost the community jam and all that. Mm -hmm. But um, it's kind of hard to balance those sentiments with, yeah. <laughs> you know, raising rates to make it affordable for people to hire people. But um, it's it's a conversation that has yet to be fleshed out. So okay. yeah. Tuesday's the day. I think another point, last point to mention is that um, for a lot of the local employees, um, they think that the intentions of the TMA are. Um, are good but it's just mm -hmm. unfeasible um, for them because a lot of them for example this employee that I spoke to at Bell's Books downtown she travels from La Honda it's a 15 mi minute drive 15 mile drive excuse me um, and it's up in the mountains there's no bus um, she said that if she lived closer to Palo Alto she would be totally happy to walk or bike but it's just not possible for her and, and, and I think yeah. that's that's a huge point even like people who live anywhere along the coast whether it's like you know the west part of San Francisco, or people yeah, commute from certain Bay. parts of East Bay. We have some yeah, people commuting from Tracy and things like that. Like, what is a go pass going to do for them? Like, nothing. What is an eco pass? It's like, it's one of those, if you're a hammer, everything's a nail kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so <laughs> it's like it's they're uh, being penalized, but they don't have the other option yeah. at mm -hmm. this point. Right. Um, okay. So. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I uh, appreciate mm -hmm. your reporting this week, and we will see what the council does and how that discussion unfolds. Yep. Um, yep. Well, that wraps it up for this topic. Um, subscribe to us, like us, follow us on social media, or on paloaltoonline.com. Uh, we'll see you next week.